It's April 23rd, 2014, and I'm going to use the CrowdStrike Heartbleed Scanner here to test my home lab network for vulnerabilities to Heartbleed. Now, there's an article here that came out today as well, April 23rd, giving a, a bit of a walkthrough of how to use the scanner or the basics, uh, launching it and so forth and where to get it. I'm just going to go a little bit further, uh, find a vulnerable host, and um, maybe even patch it and see if it works. So I um, figured I might as well record video while I'm doing it. Okay, sorry for the micro microphone quality. I'm not in my normal location where I have all my equipment. Let's get started with downloading the tool. So we'll click on download, save the zip file. And I happen to be using Chrome. We can open up the archive. When you go to run it, you get a warning. Do you want to extract it? We'll say yes. And we'll plop the files right into where it suggests. That's fine. All right, we can close the parent folder, the zip file. And now we're looking at the executable. It's time to go ahead and run it. Okay, Heartbleed Scanner. No installation necessary. And here it is, running. One other little quick tip here would be if you want it to show up in your uh, start menu after hitting the uh, Windows key and typing the name of the product, uh, it won't by default because it's not installed. But if you just say right click, you right click on it and say pin to start, now you'll be able to find it easier and launch it again later without navigating your folder uh, on your hard drive. Okay, so we've got the tool running already. And let's, uh, let's use the tool. So usability. It's not hard to use it, uh, but I found a couple of things that um, will probably make it a little easier for you to run it. Now, you'll see it found my network and it found my own host. I'm on a 10.10.1 network, and my own host is 157. I don't need to touch anything here. But if you click play at this point, nothing happens. And it warns you, add targets to the list. So what you really want to do is just use this add button. It'll give the whole subnet, the whole range, excuse me, will just be automatically be added here. And now we click play or run. It's scanning. It's beginning. So now we just wait for it to scan the entire network. Okay, you'll see we have a green status bar here. And you'll see we have a counter at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video. It's going to take a good five or ten minutes for it to finish. I'll resume when it's near the end. And resume the video. You'll see it found a vulnerable host, and it's just finishing up here. Now, spotting the vulnerable host, that's the usability issue I was mentioning. It doesn't like pop to the top or show you what it is that it found. And because it's by default sorted by IP address, I find it a whole lot easier to click OK when the scan is complete. And click twice on the status column to do a reverse sort. And there it is, the vulnerable host, uh, my ESXi host, 10.10.1.50. Yep. So the tool worked. It did its thing. Now it's time to go ahead and remediate or fix that host. The remediation involves making sure that under the ESXi host, Security profile properties, you've got SSH running. If not already, just start it and wait for it to start. Okay, so that's making sure SSH is running. Then you want to cut your way in. See, I logged in as root. And then you'll see I typed in some commands here. What are these commands I was typing in? Well, they're from this excellent article. It's cut and paste. Type in these commands, the commands in black there. So I'm in the middle phase here, this line four that's running right now. And I'm just waiting for it to finish. I'll go ahead and pause the video until this patch action in putty is complete. Oh, no need to pause, it just finished. So let's see what it says. Okay, so there's a whole lot of ibs it pulled down. So this may have done, um, well, more than I wanted to, really, right? Uh, it pulled down all the latest stuff. 
That could affect drivers and so forth. Oh well. No big deal, it's just a home lab. So I reboot and uh, I wait a while. So I'll resume this video when the host is rebooted and then we'll run the scanner again. So we can, now that we've rebooted the host, we can close the scanner. I can hit the Windows key and type CSH for CS Heartbleed. It came up in my list and it runs very quickly. Okay. So we're now running the second time. What am I showing you this time? Well, I could point out we don't need to go through the whole network, right? It's only the one ball of the host, dot 50 we care about. Click add, it shows up here. Click start, let it do its thing. Let's see if this rebooted or remediated and rebooted ESXi host shows an issue with Heartbleed anymore. Green status bar is almost finished with progress on its one IP address. That was vulnerable. And complete, and we're seeing zero vulnerable. So we are good. The remediation is finished. The crowd strike heart bleed scanner has proven its value, admittedly in a private network in a lab situation. Not the most important thing to patch, but still uh, a good rehearsal and a good use of the scanner tool to get comfort that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and for visiting tinkertry.com.